So on this channel, I talk about all things board game design, but I realize I haven't really talked about my story about how I became a board game designer. So I thought in this video, I would tell you about my story. So for those of you I haven't met yet, my name is Pam and I grew up in a family with five kids. So I have four siblings. And so I always had someone to play with. Um, so we were always making obstacle courses, scavenger hunts, coming up with different games. And my parents were always coming up with different activities and, and games and playing board games and things for us to do all the time. My dad would mow a baseball diamond in the backyard in the summer. He would flood a hockey rink in the winter. Um, he made up his own version of Hollywood Squares, if you remember that, and all us kids would be sitting in these different boxes. It was just some big shelving unit we had in our basement for some reason, and we would all sit in our little square and ask questions, and if you got it wrong, you'd have to jump out of the square onto a mattress, and different things like that. On New Year's Eve, we would have a ton of different games that my parents would come up with, and as kids, we would just play them, and whoever won would get different medals for random things, and it was a tradition that we actually keep doing to today. So I just grew up in an environment where there was just a lot of fun and creativity. I'm so lucky to have grown up in a home like that. And the first time that I can remember thinking to myself, you know, obviously there is someone who has designed these board games that we're playing. Like being a board game designer is a thing that I could maybe be. And I do remember emailing a board game designer. I think I just looked on the back of a board game when I was a teenager, I saw a name. And so I somehow figured out what their email address was. And I remember emailing them saying, hey, like how can I become a board game designer? And I never heard back, that's all right. The first time I can remember sitting down and saying, all right, I wanna come up with my own board game was when I believe I was 18 and I'm pretty sure it was me and my sister Meg talking about it together and we decided that we were going to make our own board game. Meg doesn't really remember this, but I do. I remember being in my dorm at university and her and I trying to come up with a game and it was a very simple roll and move style game because that's mainly what I grew up with. And typically for almost every new board game designer, your first game is usually a roll and move. And if you don't know what that means, it's just you, a game where you roll dice and then you either move your piece that number of spaces or something happens based off the dice that you rolled. Moving into my early to mid 20s, I started coming up with more ideas and started playing my games with my friends and family. It started to become a tradition that every Christmas I would have at least a, one or two games that I had come up with that I wanted my family to test out. And then in towards sort of my late 20s, I started getting a bit more serious about, okay, so how do I get one of these ideas actually published? And so there are two paths you can take. You can self-publish or you can pitch to publishers. And so if you self-publish, that means that you were going to put your project usually up on a crowdfunding site like Kickstarter or Indiegogo, something like that, get enough money from backers to then handle all of the publishing aspect of the game. So dealing with manufacturing, finding a factory somewhere to even have the game made, dealing with graphic design, uh, art, distribution, making sure it meets all the legal standards for games, and then ultimately getting your game to uh, your backers and also ideally dealing with distribution, getting it into stores as well. There are designers who have done this very successfully and this was something that I was definitely thinking about because I wanted to maintain control over my game. The other option would be to pitch to publishers. And so that is where you present your idea to different publishers and then hopefully one of them decides that they like your game enough that they want to actually make it. So then you would sign a contract with them and you're essentially licensing your game to them for them to make. Now they're going to be dealing with the manufacturing, with the shipping, with the art, with the graphic design, with all of that side of the business. And you in return will get a royalty percentage, usually around 5%. So back in around what, 2013, 2014, I was focusing on one game that I really enjoyed. It was called Compono and it was a speed matching game. It, the gameplay is very simple. I definitely was focusing on how it looked. I've talked about this in previous videos where the gameplay, it was fun, but I was definitely focusing a lot more on how it looked. And I was learning Illustrator through this and I was focusing on the patterns of the cards and how the cards looked and it did look beautiful. And so I decided that was the game that I wanted to self publish. So I got a book by Jamie Stegmeier about crowdfunding and I read it my two main takeaways from this book were one, self-publishing is a lot of work. 
If you're up for it, it can be absolutely rewarding, but you need to take a hard look and be realistic about how much is involved with publishing your own game. The second is that if you want to self-publish, you need to already be part of a community or already have an audience before you launch your project. At that point, I had only been testing with my friends and family. I wasn't part of the design community. I didn't really know anyone in the board game industry at all. So after reading that book, I did decide that I was going to focus on pitching and also decided to start getting more involved in the board game design community. I remember Googling board game design meetups in Toronto. I was living in Toronto at the time and I found a meetup at Snakes and Lattes. And it was of course very scary to go to something like that by yourself for the first time, but I did it. I learned so much by being exposed to this group of designers. Just to see so many different amazing ideas, it really spurs your own creativity. At this time, I also founded the group Board Game Broads, which is a group for women in the board game industry. That's what it was when it first started. It has since evolved to include trans, gender non-conforming, and non-binary people. And it's just a great space that I found. I couldn't really find a space like that when I first was starting to find different communities. When I started searching these communities out, I didn't really find a community like that. And so being in the minority, you know, at these meetups, I was one of only maybe a couple not dudes at the meetups. It was just nice to have a space where uh, we could help lift each other up and share our experiences. So Board Game Broads, now called Board Game Broads Plus, is still up and running and it's a great community that I started when I didn't quite find one that already existed. I believe it was through Board Game Broads that I found out about a prototype convention happening in Orlando in the winter of 2016. So I decided to sign up for that and go attend that. It was my first playtesting convention I had ever been to, which was also, again, very nerve wracking, but I just practiced explaining my game over and over and over. I remember having a phone call with my sister Meg to get like pump me up and to, like calm my nerves and uh, I just went for it and everyone was very, very nice, super nice. I met some great people, got some great feedback on my games. I tested a trivia game as well as a game called Just Face It. When I came back from that to Toronto, I looked around for more conventions like this in Toronto and I actually found that there weren't that many. I actually don't think there were any at that time. Um, so me and a couple other designers in Toronto founded ProtoTO, which was a prototyping convention. The first one was held in the summer of 2016, just a few months after my very first convention down in Orlando. We sent out invites to a bunch of different publishers and I threw one out there to Hasbro and they ended up saying yes, that they would come to our small little convention in Toronto for its first year. It was very cool. I know that they had other reasons that they wanted to come to Toronto anyway, so the timing just really worked out for us. And so there were Hasbro reps at the very first ProtoTO, which was amazing. And so I showed them my game, which I was calling Just Face It at that time. And the reps there, they, they liked it and they asked for me to mail them a prototype, which is so cool. So I mailed them a prototype. After a few months, they got back to me saying that they wanted to publish it. So this is my first published game. And it's actually the first time I've I had pitched a game, which is definitely the exception to the rule. Normally you get many, many rejections before you get a yes. Since then, don't worry, I've had many, many rejections. So I signed the contract with Hasbro and then the game now called Hold That Face came out in the fall of 2017. It was part of their subscription service that they had for a while where you would get a box every month and a few games in it. And it also was on Amazon and it still is on Amazon. And I just continue to become more involved in the community, attending more conventions, working on more games, and just becoming a better designer overall. I met another publisher through ProtoTO called Outset Media. I showed them my game called Act Fast at ProtoTO 2018 and followed up with them and pitched it again in the spring of 2019. And they said yes, that they wanted to publish that game too. It was around this time that I moved from Toronto to Vancouver. Uh, in the winter of 2020, I went to the New York Toy Fair and I pitched a bunch of games to different publishers, just going up to their booths and introducing myself and asking if they wanted to, if they had some time to listen to a pitch. Also very scary. You'll see that there's a trend of a lot of scary things, but I did them anyway. And a lot of great things have happened since I've taken on that attitude. Out of New York Toy Fair, I made a contact there and I showed them my game Where the Wind Blows, 
which is a puzzle tile game. We went back and forth for quite a few months. I actually thought it was going to be picked up as well, but it was ultimately a no. Another publisher that I met at New York Toy Fair, I maintained contact with them and I got onto their designer email distribution list and they sent out a call for submissions for ideas for a game with a specific IP in the fall of 2021. I submitted my proposal for that and was ultimately selected for that game and that game will be coming out next year in the fall of 2023. And in the spring of 2021, I participated in an online speed pitch event with Origins where I pitched a party game and that was picked up by a publisher there as well and will be coming up in fall of 2023. Currently, I am working on turning my game Where the Wind Blows into a mobile game because that is definitely feedback I was getting throughout my playtest that it was a really fun game, but it was almost more of a really good solitaire game. So we're gonna see what happens with that. I've also been busy with rebranding to Pamwall's game design rather than party hack games. And as always coming up with new game ideas. I have found a really great designer community here in Vancouver. So I have a place where I can test my games out and test their games out and it's really great to have that here too. And in spring of 2021 I decided to start a Patreon because ultimately throughout this whole time I've had a day job. And when I moved from Toronto to Vancouver I decided I was going to be intentional about really focusing on my board game design with the goal of ultimately doing it full time. So I started a Patreon to try and generate another stream of income for my board game design. Ultimately, it was mainly my family and friends who were supporting me on Patreon who I love, but I don't want them to be, you know, taking on any of that responsibility of my dream of actually making money off of my board game designs on a full-time basis. So I moved my Patreon to this YouTube channel last winter in the winter of 2022. So now uh, my focus is on this channel, on coming up with new games as always and turning Where the Wind Blows into a mobile app. So that's my story and that's how I got to where I am right now. It is always a journey. I still have a day job, but I am prioritizing my board games in my off time and it really has paid off. Yeah, so everyone's story will be different, but I'm sure that some things will likely be the same. The more you reach out to the community and get involved with other designers, the more you'll learn and the better designer you'll become. And if you do things that scare you, you'll always grow and learn a lot from them and maybe even something great will happen from them. So I'm always learning. I'm on a journey. I'm still figuring things out, always trying to become a better designer and not letting fear stop me from reaching my goals. So let me know if this was interesting for you. If you have any other questions, let me know absolutely in the comments. I obviously didn't go into all the detail. A lot has happened over the years, but that's a general idea of how I got to where I am. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope that you like and subscribe. Now go watch five games that have inspired me as a designer and I'll see you over there.